Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Romans. Book of Romans. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 14 through 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 14 through 23. The title of the message is Free at Last. Free at Last. Free at Last. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. The Bible says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know we not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of man because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now, yield your members, servants, to righteousness and to holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made, from, made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the in everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to be in your house, Lord. And Father, thank you for another opportunity to praise you, Lord. And to be listening to the preaching right now, Lord, help us to pay attention. Fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Whatever he's about to preach for us, Lord, we know that it's from you, Lord. Thank you for saving us from hell, freeing us from sin, Lord. And, Lord, we don't deserve to go to heaven, but with your blood, with the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you so much for that. Father, as we praise your name today, Lord, help us to do it out of our hearts. Everything that we do, whether it be praising you with our songs, with music, our fellowship, we listen to preaching. Help us to do it with all of our hearts, Lord. Yes. Help us to give this day unto you. Help us to send it to you. For the rest of the day, in Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. 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 Free at last. Being free is a great, great blessing. You and I are free in this country. We're not under any specific authoritarian rule, or we're not in slavery. You ask someone from countries where there's no freedom, North Korea, for example, they are not free. They are under the dictatorship of Kim Jong-un. Wherever they go, they fall under strict rule. Wherever they go, they are always watched. Wherever they go, they don't have freedom to do anything that they want to do. If you salute America, you go to concentration camp. If you say any bad words towards Kim Jong-un or Kim Jong-il or Kim Il-sung, who founded the, you know, country, you will go to a concentration camp. And a lot of times, you will die in there. And it's not just you only. Your families will be tortured. Your families will be sent to concentration camp. And a lot of times, they'll die as well. So when you think about being free from something, it has a great significance to it. A lot of times, young people when they turn 18, they become adults, and they say, I'm free from my parents' authority. And there's a lot of dangers involved with that as well. Freedom is something that is very precious, but when you are free, you can do many, many wrong things. And as Christian, according to Romans 6.22 that we just read, you and I are made free from sin. So you and I have this freedom. You and I are free. However, when you look at verse 15, 
what then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? We have this freedom to sin as well. Even though you and I are made free from sin, we don't have to do it, but we are still doing it. As Christians, that is a big, big problem. Even though you're made free from sin, you continue to sin. And you live under bondage of sin, even though you're a Christian. As unsaved people, they live in bondage of sin all the time. Because they have no hope. Their body and soul is stuck together. You and I, when we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our body and soul separated forever. Amen. Spiritual circumcision. Right. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. It's a doctrine that you and I should definitely know and tell others as well. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. So when we are made free from sin, when we trust that Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you have to understand that your soul is free from your body. It's separated once and for all. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, Bible says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So Bible says that your body and your soul is separated once and for all. I mentioned it previously in the past. That's why whatever your body does, your soul is safe. No matter what you do with your body after you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to end up in heaven. Amen. And that's grace of God. And that's once saved, always saved. That's why it's amazing how people reject such a simple salvation. If someone were to tell me that you will never have to go to jail if you do this, wow. just once in your life, but you don't have to do anything, you just have to trust me from bottom of your heart. I'll do it because you know, I really don't want to go to jail. I don't know about any other, one of you guys here or listening. Do you guys want to go to jail? No. I mean, do you want to spend your life in jail? No. You have no freedom. Right. Right. And when you use bathroom, you have no freedom. When you take shower, there's no freedom. When you do anything, there's no freedom. That's the environment. But as Christians, unfortunately, Many of you live in under that condition. True. You live in your own jail cell. The first point is, you should be free at last, but you're not because of your addiction to sin. Many of you guys might not admit it, but you're addicted to a certain type of sin. That's why you don't have that joy. That's why you're unhappy. That's why you don't feel like you're closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's always something in between you and the Lord. Well, That's because of your sin. Amen. And not just because of sin itself per se, because you yourself is addicted to that sin. Yes. Think about drug addicts. Why do they constantly go back to doing their drugs? They have some you know, sobering period. They're free from it for a little bit, but they constantly go back and go back and go back because they're under that bondage, under the bondage of that sin. As Christians, even though the Word of God says you and I are made free from sin because of the Lord Jesus Christ, you live a life addicted to sin. That's why there's no fruits in your life. That's why when you live each day, it feels like you're living in jail. It feels like you're that drug addict because you try to stay away from it, but you constantly get pulled back. Before you know it, you thought you weren't going to do that sin anymore, but you're doing it over and over and over. How can someone who goes back to the regime 
right, can say, I have freedom. Imagine you came out of North Korea, Cuba, or any other you know, communist country, and you're like, you know what? I don't like this freedom. I'm going to go back. I had this freedom to eat whenever I want, to go wherever I, whenever, wherever I want, the thing however I want. But you know what? I'm just going to go back to my communist country. I'm going to let them make me think how I want. I'm going to let them feed me. And I'm going to be under this harsh rule. Nobody on their right mind will go back. Just nobody. You, I ask you, 99 out of 100 people will be like, no, I'm not going back. But when it comes to sin issues in your life, you're constantly going back. I mean, your old bondage, your land that's ruled by the devil, you keep on going. You keep on going. And that's why Christians end up doing nothing for the Lord in their life. Majority of the Christians. Because they can't get out of that sin problem. You're definitely saved. And you're going to heaven if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. But you amount to nothing as a Christian. At the judgment seat of Christ, you'll just be full of shame. And you'll just want to hide somewhere, but you can't. Yes. Because life video is playing whatever you've done for Lord Jesus Christ. But can you imagine, since you got saved and until you're dead or day of rapture, everything's playing. And constantly, same scene appears over and over. Woo! If you do the same thing over and over, that's addiction. Right. Uh, you have to admit that. Yes. If you read your Bible on a daily basis, then you're addicted to reading the Word of God. Amen. If you're out there preaching the word of God regularly, then you're addicted to, you know, preaching the gospel. If you're coming whenever church doors open, you're addicted to coming to church. Amen. If you, whenever, you know, there's a fellowship you go, you're addicted to yeah. fellowship. So not all the addictions are bad, but many of the addictions are bad, yeah. right? Christian, being a Christian does not exclude you from any of the sins out there. Right. You can do any sin. And especially those of you who, were, who got saved after you became an adult, later in your life. I mean, nowadays, you know, that's not even true many times because kids grow up so fast because of technology. You have that experience of committing that sin. Yes. So your body remembers it. Your brain remembers it. Which means you can't always do it. That's why in Christian homes, right, alcohol is rampant, pornography is rampant, drug use is rampant. Did you hear? Yes. I'm not talking about normal homes. Regular Christian, Bible-believing, church attendees home, there's pornography, there's drug use, yes. and there's alcohol. That's true. It doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from you in your past, before you got saved, being addicted to those sins. Right. And if you truly do not have the heart, like life or death kind of determination to get rid of those sins, you will continue to commit it until you die, yeah. until you go to, I don't know, if Lord, Lord comes back early, you know rapture, which means you're not free from sin currently, then I could guarantee that whatever you pray to the Lord, there's going to be hindrance. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. Isaiah 59, verse 2. The Bible says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face up from you, that he will not hear. Sometimes don't you wonder why it feels like the Lord's not listening or hearing? 
Why? Because of your sin. Your sin is blocking you from that right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. When you're free, you should feel like you're free. However, so many Christians, you're not free, even though you're free. Each day, that sin entices you and has gotten a hold of you. So you just can't get out of it. And that's an issue. There shouldn't be an excuse, but you make excuse to commit those sins. My life is too hard, so I need some relief. I need some me time. I need some happiness and thrill. So what do you do? Instead of going to the Word of God, instead of praying, instead of listening to, say, good preaching or good hymns, you go to that sin. Whatever that sin may be, you and the Lord knows. And you know you're struggling with it. And I'm not here to pick anybody out. It's something that every single Christian struggles with. There are no perfect Christians out there. You're not Apostle Paul. You're not John Wesley. I mean, those two are, you know, two of the greatest Christians ever lived. Apostle Paul, the greatest Christian ever lived. You and I are not him. All the pastors that you see, they're not perfect. Pastor's wives that you see, they're not perfect. Everybody has their own issues. Then, if it happens to everybody, then it's happening to you. Yes. Then I don't even have to ask you in detail what's going on in your life. Because I know for sure that you're struggling with something. Because if you're not struggling with something, then you have a perfect life. Nobody has perfect life. When you think you have perfect life, something's going to happen. Whether it's through health, whether it's through finances, whether it's through relationship. But when those things do happen in your life, where do you go? People go to sin. Unsaved people, they go to drugs. Or they go to, you know, fornication, adultery. They go to alcoholism. They go to gambling. They go to something to relieve that pain, to relieve that struggle, to ease that, you know, tough thing that's going on in their life. But where do you go as a Christian? Do you go to the same places? That's a problem. Do you go to the same sins that you think will save you from your current trouble? That will never, ever satisfy you, especially if you're saved, if you have the Holy Ghost in you. only thing you're doing is grieving the Holy Ghost as you constantly go back to that sin and committing that sin over and over again. Now, one brother told me one time, you know, it's really hard to stop committing that sin. You know, I told him I agree. I mean, sin is such a, you know, enticing, strong pull. Yeah. It's like magnet to you. Sin, you, is magnet. Quote, unquote, it's match made in heaven, here on earth. It's like if you have your favorite food, it's something that you want to eat all the time. If you have a favorite, you know, thing that you want to see, it's something that you want to see all the time. It's you have favorite Music is something that you want to hear all the time. That's what sin is. And he goes, man, how can I stop it? Even though I've been safe for a while, man, I keep on going back to it. I go to street preaching. I do visitation. I read my Bible. I pray. You know, try to be a good father. But I constantly do it. Constantly do it. And then as we were talking, we came to the same conclusion. Only way you could defeat that sin is if you deal with it like life or death. Simple as that. Either you die by committing that sin or you live by not committing that sin. Simple as that. 
Because if you don't have that kind of determination, attitude, and conviction, you can never get out of that sin. You're only saved Christian, that's it. But you do everything else. You're committing all the sins that's listed in the Word of God. And then that sin falls under one of that sin, those sins listed. Then how can you say, you know, I'm made free from sin and I live free from sin? You don't. You don't live free from sin again. Number one, because you're addicted to sin. It's time for you to admit it. Uh, I mean, any rehab program, they say first thing you got to do is what? You have to admit it. You really have to admit it in front of God. You don't have to admit it to me. You don't have to admit it to anybody. First thing is that you have to admit to God. God, I am addicted to this sin. I need help. That's the first thing you've got to do. You have to go to God for solution. Don't call 1-800-ANONYMOUS. You know, that's why there's so many relapse. You only hear one or two successful stories, but majority of them all relapse. Alcohol, they go back to it. Right? Drugs, they go back to it, right? You know, pornography, they go back to it. Gambling, they go back to it. Because they can't, you cannot find solution in man. So you have to go to God. Amen. You have to go to God and say, God, you know, it's about time I come to you honestly. It's about time I come to you from the bottom of my heart. I have this issue with this sin. It had, I mean, it had hold of me. For how long it may be, month, years, tens of years, or all your life, as long as you could remember. You're like, God, you know, I did half-heartedly, you know, listen to some preaching, come up to the altar, I pray, you know, I made this, you know, resolve and commitment here and there, but I seriously never really did it to the point where it was a life-death situation. You got to remember, you're in a battle. You're in spiritual battle. Devil will not stop. You, f you might feel like, oh, maybe he left me alone for a little bit. No, he's constantly working. He's constantly working. It's just that quiet time. You know, like during the war, people, they want to kill each other. But for a little bit, there's a strategy going on. You know, they're making their strategy. How do I attack my enemy? But you and I, it's a lifelong battle. The devil is behind the scenes, and he's, he's constantly strategizing. How can I destroy you? I've gotten you before with this sin. I've gotten you before with this addiction. I just need that perfect time to bring it back in your life. Man, I want you to suffer. I want you to be in pain. I want you to be discouraged. I want you to be depressed. I want you to be suicidal because I do not want you to do anything for him. I won't see you for eternity, but as long as you are here on earth, as I'm God of this world, I'm going to do all I can in my power to destroy you, your family, and your church, and all the ministry. But that's how devil's thinking right now. So it, it's not for only the leaders of the church. It's for every single person, every single Christian out there. It's just that, you know, they want to, he has a bigger target to pastors, pastor's wife. It's like this, you know. If you were to get rid of the general, leader of the army or the military, then they usually fall. I mean, look at David against Goliath. They thought Goliath was going to be the hero for Philistines, but when Goliath fell, the whole army fell. So, so you do have to constantly pray for pastors and pastors' wives, right? If they fall, then the local church falls. And then you see many occasions, right? This Bible-believing, so don't ever think that they're superhumans either. I'm not a superhuman either. I make same mistakes like you, right? Just different role inside the ministry. That's why you see so many Bible-believing pastors and pastors' wives compromise or fall into sin, and the ministry is gone. 
You hear affairs, right? You hear bribery. You hear everything because nobody is exempt. Everybody is same. Then you do need to pray for the pastors, pastors' wives, and you do need to pray for each other. And you definitely need to pray for your own family members. Yeah. You need to pray for your wife, and you need to pray for your husband, especially for those married people. Because what do you think devil's going to try to do? Right. Right? Devil's going to try to split you guys. When you and I are free from sin, that means that marriage should have freedom too. Marriage should have that free to trust each other, love each other, care for each other. Amen. But the devil will try to break that yeah. freedom, that liberty you have in the marriage. Then what's going to happen? Going back to the current point of addiction to sin, if you were a fornicator before you got saved, adulterer, it's going to come back. Unfortunately, if you have lived that life in the past, it just doesn't go away. Right. It's something that you have to live with. Then what's going to happen? If you guys have an argument, because married people will always have argument here and there. Yeah. If you guys never have argument, you're robots, or you don't care for each other. You have no feelings. But as someone with emotions and feelings and understanding and knowledge, opinions sometimes, you know, will not match. Yeah. It will bounce off each other. Right. And there's going to be push and pull, and they're going to be fight. During that time, how do you think of your spouse's ass? Someone that you love more than your life? Or someone just as your partner? just bound by the marriage certificate. If you think like that, then what's going to happen? Just like over 50% of the marriage, it could just end up in divorce. Right. Then devil's going to get inside. Okay, you know what? You're like a slave in this marriage. Again, what's opposite of free? Being slave. You're in a slavery relationship. You know what? If she's going to treat you like that, or even if he's going to treat you like that, if she says this, if he says this, you know what? Even though you guys are Christians, some things that you can't handle anymore, right? Let's be human about it. You know, there's a better person waiting for you outside. There's someone better somewhere out there. You know what? You, know, you could start your new ministry or faith somewhere else. You don't have, you don't have to stay in Bible Baptist Church International. Go somewhere else then you're going to start thinking like that because you're human. You're addicted to sin. You're thinking like that, okay. Then arguments get bigger and bigger, and, and now it has plateaued, and you don't care anymore. You come to a point where, here we go again. I'm tired of this fighting. Okay. And you become vegetable or dead to the person. And all you think about is, OK, should I call it quits? And you, don't tell me you're not thinking like this. And you start thinking about some other people that you said I could have gotten with. Oh, yeah, man. Like, oh, man, that Facebook. And my old, old Facebook friends. My friends from college, my friends from high school, even back to middle school, elementary. And we had some you know, good thing going on. Man, my current situation doesn't look that good. I'm just, you know, every day is like you know, torture for me. So what happens? What do you think is going to happen? So-called Bible-believing Christian. Because you're addicted to sin, you're going to start pressing that button, chat. Or you think it's going to stop from chatting? You call. You think it's going to stop from calling? You're going to meet. And rest is history. What do you think is going to happen once you start that fire? It's going to burn the house down. That's when it stops. 
So if you don't take it seriously, life or death situation, then you're going to commit that sin. I guarantee you that simple as that. That's how human beings work. And you and I are no different. So if in marital situation, if you think like that in any moment or even right now, then you guys will have problem. Guarantee. Then you have to get rid of it. Amen. You have to get rid of that thought devil's giving you. Yes. If you guys tie the knot once and for all, then that's it. Amen. No matter what happens, that's it. Yes. Whether whether your husband or wife gets more worse or not, you guys are stuck to forever. That's how you have to think. Yes, I'll just go back to 1 Corinthians 13. Charity. Amen. Work on your charity. Then you'll stop going into pornography. you stop going into illegitimate, illegitimate relationship, fornicating, adultery. You could stop those things. Victory. If you really care for the person that you marry. Yes. Because many Christian marriages are on the brink of, you know, tearing apart. Many, many, many. This day and age, you know, everything's hard, yeah. right? Economy is hard. You know, health issues are hard. And people just don't care about each other like they used to. Unsaved people back in the 50s, even 70s, yeah. even though they hate each other, they always stayed the same. I mean, they stayed together. Why? Because they know that's the value and that's the right thing to do. But this day and age, it doesn't work like that. People think that, okay, after our kids grow up, we call it quits. Kids were the ones that kept us together. Now, if you think like that too, it's going to happen to you. Man, I hate this person. I don't want to be with this person, but we have a couple kids together. For our kids' sake, we're going to stay together. Then what do you think is going to happen when they're gone? Don't you think devil has been waiting? Strata I mean, he's using a strategy, okay? You know, I got all the time in the world. So when you, I'll just wait for you, you know, 20 years once the kids get old. And I'll, I'll come in. You guys will have a big argument, and then I'm going to, lead you guys to the right direction. Okay, you, I'm going to lead you to this person. I'm going to lead you to that person. So when you have problems in marriage, don't talk to your friends or opposite sex. What do you think is going to happen? Right. You're going to get closer to those people. That's right. And devil's going to use that situation to get to you. Right. It's all like, why, why you do those things? Because you're not free from that sin. Because you still have that lustful thoughts towards other. I mean, now, even, you know, homosexuality is going on everywhere. Right. So you have to watch out for every single thing. Not just the opposite sex, but you got to watch out for same sex as well. Think about all the sins that you're addicted to. And again, married couples out there. You know, if you're Christian couples out there, don't you ever think about, you know, splitting. That splitting, you know, you have thrown the seed already on the ground. And that's going to grow. Yeah. And that's going to grow. Some of them grow very fast. Some of them grow year. It takes years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. But it's still growing. And then you have to reap it. Right? You sold it, and you're going to yeah. reap it. So before all those, you know, horrible reaping happens, you have to stop it. And the only way you could stop it is by going to the Lord. Amen. You could only, there, there's only one solution. You know, message isn't too complicated. I mean, you are addicted to sin. Stop committing that sin. You can't do it on your own. You have to go to the Lord. You cannot go to the man either. You have to go to the Lord. You have to pour your heart out to the Lord, literally. You know, you see stories in the Word of God. When Nineveh got right with the Lord, what did they do? 
you know, they put ashes on them. And they're just crying out. They put it on the animals, too, because, you know, they're part of sin, too. I mean, have you ever gone to the Lord with that kind of heart and attitude? How can you not be sorrowful about your sins in front of the Lord? I mean, Lord died for every single sin of yours so that you don't have to do it again. You're free from those sins, but you still continue to go. Then who are you disappointing the most? I'm sure if it happens during marital thing, you disappoint your spouses, maybe children against parents, vice versa, or families and friends. But you always have to remember why you're not free at last, point number two, because you don't remember who you are disappointing. You don't remember who you are hurting. You don't recognize all the things and damage that you're committing and doing. Simple as that. If you and I knew the consequences that committing this sin will bring about, result in, we'll think twice. And we won't do it many times. If this thing will destroy my loved one, I won't do it. I mean, that's normal, right? I mean, if you committing that sin, say, for example, doing drugs, right? And your spouse says, if you do that one more time, we're over, right? We're really over. But you're too addicted, so you do it again. Then what's going to happen? What do you think your spouse is going to feel like? He or she doesn't care about me. You know, what's our marriage about? I mean, I can't live like this with someone that I can't trust anymore. Then it's going to break. Thank God that God gives enough grace and mercy to you and I. For some of us, we should have been broken. We should have been thrown to the garbage many, many, many times and years ago. But God still kept it together, whatever it may be, whether it's your relationship, whether it's, you know, finances, whether it's your health, or whatever it may be, God has still kept it together because of his grace and mercy. Then remember who you are hurting each time you are committing that sin that you're addicted to. Number one person that you're hurting It's the Lord Jesus Christ. If I loved you so much so that you committed all those things, say, for example, you you were supposed to go to jail for armed robbery, right? You were desperate. You needed money. So you tried to rob a bank or convenience store. You got caught, and you're supposed to go to jail for a long, long, long time. But someone came in place of you. You know what, judge? I'm going to take that person's place so that they don't have to suffer punishment. If that person took the punishment on your behalf, they expect you to be free from that sin. But what if you come back again for the same sin? Over and over and over. How do you think that person feels? What if that's your mom? Your mom goes, you know what, son? You know what, daughter? I love you so much. You're supposed to go to jail for 10 years. I'm just going to go on your behalf. She went. 10 years later, same thing happens. And you break my heart, son. You break my heart, daughter. I pay for your sin 10 years ago, and you're doing it again. At the moment when you're committing that sin, you're full of thrill, pleasure, enjoyment, so you don't even care about what's going to happen. Sin brings what? Pleasure for a season. So you're like, man, that's all I care about. I don't care about what happens to my family. I don't care about what happens to ministry. I don't care about what happens to nobody. 
I only care about myself. So people are addicted to sin. They're very selfish. That's, that's one thing that we could all agree upon. Yeah. They're very, very selfish and proud. And they're proud to the point that they could stop whenever they want. Never. I mean, <laughs> never. I mean, you go to any, any anonymous meeting, they, they, they'll all tell you, you know what? I thought I could stop it. No, I thought I could stop, right? I could stop this drug addiction, pornography. I could stop this gambling. I could stop all this. But none of them can. It's almost downright humanly impossible. That's why devil's got a great hold of you with those sins. But if you are saved especially, if Holy Ghost is in you, you have that little bit of sense in you. Man, I will disappoint my Lord and Savior if I do this, who died for all my sins. Sometimes it has to really click in your brain, click in your mind, and it has to click in your heart that me being addicted to this sin brings trouble not only to me. Number one, it grieves my Lord, and it will bring trouble to my family. It's always family affair. Don't ever forget that. Unless like you're truly bye-bye yourself, like everybody in your life is gone, right? But those are very few. And many of you are associated with somebody else called family. Then, when you are addicted to that sin, and as you commit those sin, remember who you are hurting. It's not only you. It's everybody else around you. Then maybe you'll think twice. Can you imagine in a war, you're fighting against the Nazis and your ally? You're like, you know what? I need some thrill and pleasure in my life. Commander says, do not show yourself to the enemy because location gets compromised, then we're all going to die. They're going to bomb us. They're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm so bored. Oh, you know what, man? I need this fulfillment of my pleasure. Wow. Man, you know, I got to go to that brothel, you know? I got to go to that drug house, right? And you know, I got to go to that you know, gambling place. You know, I got to go to that place you know what? No one's going to see me. It's going to be pitch dark. It's going to be 2.30 in the morning. And I'm going to crawl my way so that I'll never be detected. So you plan your thing out. You plan your sin out. Like, no one ever going to see. But what do you know? As you're going, one of the enemies, for no good reason, just for that night, decided to just walk around the area exactly the same route. Obviously, there are no coincidence, right? right? In your life. Lord put that person there. Amen. You're going. And you're like, oh, hopefully he didn't see me. But he saw you. He's running to the commander. And before you know it, bombs are blowing up in your post, and everybody's dead. And you're captured, too. You're going to die, too. You could run away, but you're going to live with that guilt for the rest of your life. You know, I think one of the worst things that a human being could have is having that guilt and living with that guilt. That's why people, after they commit serious crime, they do show up years later. They go to authorities and say, I'm sorry, you know, I committed that crime. Because they just can't handle it anymore. I told you a story. If you guys remember, there was a big heist in Las Vegas area. She went to Europe. Ten years later, she came back. She called a lawyer. You know what? I can't live like this anymore. And then she realized she can't live like that because she had a kid. And she did not want her kid to know that mom is a fugitive just living like that. So she wanted to have a clean conscience. What about you, Christian? Do you have clean conscience today? Are you clean with the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there... Any sin in your life where it's hindering you from having that clean relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? Don't you want to have that feeling? 
Don't you ha- want to live like you're free? I mean, free at last. I mean, literally free. Yeah. People who are in slavery, when they're free, wow. I mean, they were joy. And they, one thing in common, if you ask them, think about people, you know, who's free from communist countries. Do you ever want to go back? Majority will just say no. I love this freedom that I'm experiencing. But Christians, why do you live in this bondage of sin still? Why do you live such a terrible Christian life? Why do you live such a burdened, discouraged Christian life? Why are you so depressed? You got to get out of that sin. You have to go to the Lord like once and for all, like today. Don't wait until tomorrow. You'll forget it and you'll not think of it serious. You have to go to the Lord today because every single one of us have certain sins that we need to take care of with the Lord. You have to go to the Lord today and you got to give your heart out to the Lord. No more, you know, easy, busy, you know, few second prayer. Lord, I'm really sorry for this sin. I don't want to do it again. Help me. So it doesn't work like that. You think when they were covered in ashes, you know, those folks who truly repented in the city of Nineveh, were they there for like even like 10 minutes? No, those people were there for hours, long time, right? You have to go to the Lord and seriously spend time with the Lord. You got to put your heart out to the Lord. Yeah. I mean, literally, so that Lord can help you truly. When Lord says he could help you, he helps people who gives all their heart to him. Don't expect Lord to just help you when you're not even aligned with him and you don't even give your heart to him. Right. Lord, I might do it again, but help me. And that's you and I's attitude many times. Right. Lord, I am weak, so I am going to do it again. Oh, no. Just help me. Just show more grace and mercy to me. No, just a little bit more. I mean, what kind of attitude is that? Right. The Lord's like, okay, uh, you really haven't read my Bible, huh? My word, okay? You know, I'm going to chastise you good so that you'll wake up. For some, you have gone through it already. I mean, do you want to go through more chastisement in your life? I, mean, I don't want to. I mean, th- those are terrible times. Then it's time for you to wake up, realize. In conclusion, realize that you have addiction. You're addicted to sin. Just admit it. Everybody has one yeah. or two. Some people have several, right? Know that who you are disappointing, right? And the solution, there's only one solution. You have to go to the Lord with the attitude of life or death, just like in that battle. World War I, two, any wars, right? Just like that battle. You know what? If I don't get right, I'm going to die, and I'm going to kill my whole country. Man, with that kind of attitude, I know for sure that you and I can change. With that kind of attitude, there's going to be a difference. With that kind of attitude, you're going to have good fruits, and it all starts from your heart. Let's pray.